How are you viewers? Prospect to Pete here. Uh, just a quick video. Um, I, I've noticed a lot in forums, uh, the gold refining forum, etc. Um, where people have asked over and over and over again for solutions to problems which they haven't even bothered searching and that already exist from other people who've asked them. Or um, they can't find the answer. And any time they go to a forum, the first thing that gets said is read the book. Even if they've read the book before, they say read it again. Uh, one person I noticed this morning, he said that he's searched high and low for answers. He's been through the, the forum. He's also checked out YouTube. Can't find a solution. So what I want to do is I want to help people who have failed and don't know where to go from there. Can't find the answers. They're pulling their hair out looking for a uh, resolution. Okay, now this video should only be followed firstly if you're not a dimwit and you know what you're doing with chemicals. If you're, if you're some sort of tool and you don't use protective gear, um, don't come back from the dead and see me because it's not my problem. Uh, secondly, I would ask that people um, do search high and low for the answer first. Forums are very, very good, but they don't have all the answers. And then if you're absolutely stuck and you don't know where to go from there, then this video should hopefully help. Even the best of us make mistakes. Um, I've been doing this for years and I've come to a crossroads where I don't know which direction to go. I've tried everything, everything I can think of. I've been to the forum and asked them, I've watched YouTube, and I can't find the answer. So I know what the solution is, and this is what I'm going to show you guys. Okay, here's the chart for the reactivity series of metals. Some of you may have heard of it, some of you may not. Basically explains how things react to different things like this water, acids, and so on. The higher something is on the list, the more it reacts, the lower something is on the list, the less it reacts. Now, the reason I've come into some trouble is because I've been experimenting with new ways of precipitating. Um, I can't find um, proper directions on how to, to use the things I want to use, so I've experimented. As a result, I've got now a mess that I, that I simply can't seem to precipitate um, and so I need to start over but other other people have other reasons for having a, a mess that they don't know what to do with most times I'll tell you now is because people put too much nitric acid um, then they're stuck with a problem that the gold won't precipitate out and they don't know what to do and then that that's a, a long drawn out system as well of heating it evaporating it down and then adding hydrochloric acid and it's a long time consuming process uh, uses up you know your hot plate for a long period of time and so on so there's multiple reasons why someone might want to start all over again like i said the reason is for mine is uh, experimenting gone wrong so what I'm showing you this for is because, for those who don't know, anything you pick out of this list, let's say for argument's sake, aluminium, everything, if you put aluminium into your, into your solution, everything below aluminium will fall out of solution. It'll set them in the bottom as a solid. Anything above whatever you've chosen to put into the solution will stay in solution. All right? Now, I have tried dropping with copper. You can put lots and lots of copper in your solution and you'll drop your, your silver and your gold and maybe platinum if it's in there. I tried that. I did get the sediment, which I then tried to treat. Um, and this is where I was experimenting on how to precipitate it and I've gone wrong because I'm, I'm just experimenting so I'm starting again what I'm going to do is I'm going to put aluminium in my solution 
I've got tons of aluminium from pulling computers apart, etc. You know, the, the cases around the CD drive are, are nice. They're not paper thin, but they're, they're not too thick. They're a good thickness to throw in, in acids. And there's, there's so much aluminium I've collected. I've got bucket loads of it. So I'm going to put the aluminium in, and then everything below that, whatever is in the solution, obviously all these things aren't in the solution, but anything that is in my solution below aluminium will fall out. So, what do I expect to have for I don't think there's any manganese. I doubt there's any zinc or chromium. There will be iron, okay, possibly, most likely. I don't know about cadmium or cobalt. There's probably some nickel, most likely. There would definitely be tin. I don't know about lead. Maybe from the solder there could be some lead. Hydrogen, no, that's not a metal. Um, antimony, yeah. That's usually, I've only ever seen antimony when making um, stannous chloride. But anyway, I don't know what bismuth is. There will be copper, I, and there's probably not going to be any mercury. I can't see how there could be. Silver, gold, and platinum. So what I'll be left with is a big pile of mess at the bottom of all those metals. And it's not a big problem. Um, it just means basically sorting it out from scratch. So once I have all those solids, pretty much nothing left in the solution, only, only the things that are above aluminium, if, if any of those things are in the solution, which I doubt, um, I would then treat the solids as if I'm starting from scratch. I would first of all wash it of any acid remaining, any residue, acids, any of the liquid, wash it all clean, and if any of you don't know about the whole washing process, uh, I think you better learn that now before you go any further, because washing is very, very important, especially if you want nice, clean gold. Uh, I will wash it and wash it and wash it until there's no residue of any acid. Then I will put HCl, hydrochloric acid. Hoping to get rid of any iron, definitely get rid of tin and whatever else might come out. Uh, I will Once I've had that in there for a couple of days, but maybe put it on heat, um, stir it and all that sort of type of thing. Make sure that I've done what I can. I will then drain it off, rinse it, wash it properly again. And then I'll probably even put some more hydrochloric back in there just to make sure that I've got rid of all those things. Then I'll go through the washing process again. And because I want to then go to nitric, I can't muck around with the hydrochloric. I have to make sure that every bit of it's out, every single skerrick, because if there's a tiny little bit left in there, then it'll only turn to acro -rigia and I'll be back to where I'm started. I need to make sure that it's 100% clean, no residues whatsoever of the hydrochloric that I've been using. Then I'll put nitric in there. Nitric will hopefully get rid of the other things that the hydrochloric couldn't. And same thing, I'll hold it for a couple of days, and put it on heat, all these type of things. Drain off the nitric, rinse it, wash it properly, and then start with some more nitric to give a second, second um, dose. And try and uh, make sure that I've got everything I can possibly get out of solution. And what I should be left with is gold. Um, then I will wash that again, the same procedure, washing and washing and washing. This time I can use a little bit of hydrochloric acid just to make sure that it's clean of everything else. Wash it again with some more water and so on. Then I'll refine the gold and go through all the washing process a third time. I can't emphasize to you guys how important washing is. Um, at the end of it, I should have narrowed down everything, got me gold, refined it, and have some nice gold to melt. This is, uh, it's, a, it's a way of starting again without losing your gold. A lot of people panic. They think, oh, what do I do now? I can't find the answers. I've known of people who have just tipped their solution out or disposed of it in whatever way, whether it's good or bad. I've, had, I've known some people to do some silly things. I, I did some silly things when I started. Um, I, I can't even bear to think of the amount of gold that I've wasted because I thought that I'd thrown, made a mess, couldn't get it back. 
Now I know better. There are solutions like this where you can recover it even if it's worst case scenario. Um, so I believe that this is my only choice because I don't know what else to do to recover my gold. It's there. I'm not going to put it in a stock pot and wait for later because I don't believe in putting off tomorrow what you can do today. Um, plenty of time on my hands with the lockdown. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, if anyone chooses to follow this, please be careful. Don't just jump into it without knowing what you're doing with chemicals. Make sure you've got safety gear because... You need to know that when you put aluminium in acids, it violently erupts. It's not like putting silver in there where you just get a, you know, it just dilutes and dissolves. It will bubble and boil and spit and carry on. It's a very, very violent reaction. As you saw with the reactivity series of metals, aluminium is in the yellow zone that says it reacts with acids. And it's high up on the list. Now, the higher metals are on the list, the more re they react, and the lower they are on the list, the less they react. So please be careful. Use this as a last resort. So what I'm doing is a last resort. I have searched everywhere for the answer first. Okay? This is to help people who cannot find the answer, don't know what to do, and are scared of losing their gold. I know my gold's there, and I will get it this way. All right? So I hope this helps some people. Please get back to me if it's helped you. And uh, let's get some more of that shiny stuff. See you later. Thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe. Please like. Tell your friends. I really need more subscribers. Thank you.